Hello and welcome to my On1 Photo Raw 2023 Super Select AI More In Depth Look or Review. So today I'm going to talk about Super Select AI and semantic masking. What is semantic masking? What does it do? And how is this going to help you going forward? Basically, semantic masking is what Super Select AI is all about. What it does is you upload your photograph, you open out your image, and once you select Super Select AI, the AI engine in On1 Photo Raw 2023 is going to assess your photograph and it's going to break it down into different sections. It's going to look things look for things like natural foreground, people, animals, houses, structure, sea, water, sky, buildings, foliage. It's going to look for all those individual elements and it's going to label them then and mask them automatically for you. So the general thinking being is this is going to make masking and editing your photographs an awful lot easier. So I can talk about this like 200 times, but I suppose the easiest way is actually to show you how it works. And um, before I get into it, I have a tip and I actually show you how this works really well and also how it doesn't work so well. So um, check out the chapters down below if you want to skip forward to a relevant section that's of more interest to you. Um, and I should say too as well, please do subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting very regular videos on my YouTube channel now. And um, also, if you are considering buying On1 Photo Raw 2023, check out the link in the comments down below because I have a 20% off discount code there too as well for you. So um, yeah, let's, let's just get into it and see what it's all about. So the first photograph I'm going to look at is this one. So um, let's just pop it open. Now this image is already kind of pre-edited, but let's get into Super Select AI and I'll show you what I want to do with it. So once I click on Super Select AI, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically mask the different sections of the image, like I said to you before. So once I hover over it, yes. So the left hand side of the image there now, the dark rock, there's a mask on that there now. Down here, it's showing all the foreground and it's showing the person then too as well again. And on this side, yeah, that looks kind of reasonably okay. And then here too as well on the sky. Now, the one thing you'll notice is if I hover over the, these different sections, you can see the top corner above here isn't, that's masked separately. That's actually masked with the foreground. So some of it isn't actually working properly as of yet. And even if I hover over the person, you can see the outlying edge isn't masked perfectly on the person. This is only a beta copy. This is not the finalized version, so please ignore that as of yet. That's going to be improved, and I'm told the finalized masking is going to be better. This is, has also not been performance enhanced. So as of yet, the purpose of this software is purely so we can demonstrate to you in the beta version how this works and what the advantages of it are. So um, I'm talking too much. Let's get back to editing. So there's two things I really want to do to this photograph. I want to brighten the model here now as such, and I want to add a bit more glow into the sky. So if I click on the model there now, and if I left click on her, and then right click to select my adjustments, I can go up here and I can put any adjustment I want on the model. But if I go to adjustments here now, and let's say if I go to lighten, now you might say, oh my God, that's way too bright. And yes, it probably is. She really does pop there now at the same time. But if you say, look, that really is too bright, over here on the right hand side, we have our adjustments panel. I can bring the opacity of that effect down. So straight away, if I don't want to go, let's say, adjusting the exposure or the black levels or white levels or whatever else, or structure of that mask on that person, I can just adjust the overall opacity and say, look, actually, you know, that's kind of where I like it. That's too much, that's too little, but it's about, it's about there is where I want it, you say. Cool. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go to the sky. So it's the sky selected by left clicking it, right click then to open our adjustments again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to glow and I'm going to put in charge more strong. And that looks really cool. So straight away there now, this is our, I've done that in just literally a few clicks. So that's our original and that's our finished edit. It's not life changing. It's not like, oh my God, they're so completely different. But this is just a photograph. I just wanted to pop up just to show you because there's a number of different elements in it and how well and how easy it works to edit those different sections. Now, so what we're going to do is going to pop back to our browser here now, get in a catalog. And let's have a look for the next image. And the next image we should edit probably is the cat. So we're going to edit an animal. And I'm going to show you one of the tricks here. So. If you look at our background, our background is very complex. Here we have a cat and there's a lot going on between the timber here and everything else. So as soon as I, I was thinking of using this photograph to actually show you editing it, I was thinking this isn't going to work. 
this this probably isn't going to work and this is probably one of the really good photographs to show you how it doesn't work but if i go on super select here now and if i hover over and um, give it a second is that coming there we go yeah again this is the beta version it isn't performance enhanced so it takes a couple of seconds but as you can see when i hover over the background there now it hasn't selected all of it so because again as i was saying this is quite a complex background but the little trick you can use for this then is if i go to the cat and say right well there's my cat so if i select the mask on the cat by left clicking and then if i go up here instead of painting in i can paint out so what that's going to do is it's going to mask all the surrounding area apart from the cat and now if i go to my adjustments and if i go black and white or go into you can see it's actually only adjusting the outside outside of the cat so that's really handy so you can blur the background even more if you want the cat to stick out a small bit you can say right that's actually what i'm looking for blur there now and you might say look you know it's a bit too strong or it's not strong enough you can adjust the opacity slider then over on the right hand side here too as well or if i go and say look what i want to do is i actually want to select the cat there now again so i'm going to select the cat here now again and this time i'm going to paint in so i'm going to go down here to adjustments and i'm going to go to lighten so if i go on lighten now immediately that looks wrong straight away as soon as you look at it but again our opacity slider if i come over here and just pull that back a small bit and i can pull it back to somewhere there now let's say that looks a lot better so and again i can adjust our saturation here too as well if i want and you can even adjust your temperature if you're saying oh that looks a bit yellow catch be more that color there you go and that's our photograph done so what i've done basically is such as blurred out the background um let's go to another person and then we're going to do our landscape because our landscape is our last one and the landscape is the one where we're going to have the serious issue with so let's go to our person here down below the bottom again this is a person standing in a white background this is a reasonably high contrast image so it's reasonably straightforward and the ai engine should be able to differentiate between the model and the background so what i'm gonna do is go to super select ai and again it's done a reasonably good job there now so what i can do is i'm going to select the model and i'm going to select this too as well again ignore the masking for now but what we're going to do here is we're going to do something completely different i'm going to paint out again so again whatever i do here now is only going to adjust is only going to adjust this area that's the mask as such that's been applied here now so if i right click here now and if i go down to textures i can add a texture to the background so if i start off oh sorry um if i start off above on top here now so i can go down to any one of these and give it a second if i go here now somewhere and look for something that works really well um i like it was a cool concrete that looks nice enough or if i go a oh, dark concrete there we go that looks really cool now the one thing with that again is you might say oh that's a bit strong here and yes it probably is but what i can do is i can just pull that back a small little bit again and you say oh my god that's what i want and there you go as simple as that so original image kind of boring kind of bland enough and then going to our finished article in seconds simply by masking selecting paint out above the top adding in a texture and boom there we have it or if you turn around and say you know i don't really like that texture i can delete my texture i want to add in a completely different texture so i just go back to textures here now and i can add in something that's a bit more pop in so um i can go rain postcard g text light leak i go oh itchy that looks cool so there's our itchy background again just pull back the opacity a small bit maybe just somewhere there and that's a really cool image then again so simple as that so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to edit our landscape shot and this is the one we're going to have a problem with just being straight up and you, this is not going to work absolutely perfect and i picked this shot specifically because i wanted to show you exactly how this how the software does work and also how it doesn't work
So this is the landscape photograph I wanted to show you. Now, in all fairness, I have thousands of landscape photographs and images I took myself on my on my desktop here that I could have used and it would have worked perfectly on. But I just wanted to show you something because I don't want someone thinking this is going to work perfectly on absolutely every single situation because I don't believe it ever will. And why do I not believe it ever will? Because when I look at the likes of these photographs here now, and if I go on something like, if I go on Super Select AI and come over here, give it a couple of seconds for it to kick in and there we go. It has selected the sky absolutely perfectly let's say right and this is still only the beta version now um the water is going to be a bit of a tricky one so yeah it, it, it's a small bit all over the place but what i really wanted to talk to you about here is the foreground so the foreground as you can see it kind of made a bit of a dog's dinner about it and is the final version going to get the shot right i don't think so and i really don't think it will and the reason why I really don't think it will is if I just swap over to the brush tool here now, make things a bit easier. Um, because when I look at this photograph, I took this photograph myself. Uh, I composed the shot. And even when I go to look at it and edit it, I'm left asking myself, if I wanted to apply a mask to this, where does the mask start? So obviously it goes along the water's edge and whatnot, if I want to just do the foreground. And it runs all the way over here. But then when I get to here, is this foreground or is this foreground and is that the sea or is that the sea and is this the sea or is that the foreground and which way do they interact and which way where, where does what meet what and if i'm looking at that myself personally and wondering and having to sit back and think about it then how is a bit of ai technology going to be able to get that right it's obviously not now that's not an issue because, as I say, it did the sky perfectly. It'll probably do the water perfectly after a while too as well. And you say, look, oh, it got the masking rang wrong for the foreground. That's a disaster. No, it's not. You can just go in, you can edit the mask then quickly with the brush tool yourself. So it's not an issue. You can either paint in or paint out the mask. So you can edit the mask and finesse the mask. Now, I know it's not the point of buying a software to say, oh my God, I'm going to have to manually, manually manipulate it afterwards. But... You know, I, I suppose, think of your camera. You're after buying the latest bells and whistles camera and then you set everything on manual and, you know, you're you're using spot focus or whatever else and you're just thinking, look, I'm taking control. This is another way of taking control of your editing. Yes, it is absolutely fantastic to have semantic masking and to have super select AI working for 95% of your images, but I do not personally believe it's going to work perfectly in every single one. I don't see how it's physically going to be possible. So... But at the same time, I also think this is an absolutely amazing facility to have. Please don't get me wrong. I think semantic mas masking with super select AI is worth the, it's, I suppose it really honestly is worth the price of On One Photo Raw 2023 on its own. Because that's going to make portraits, animals, macro shots. It's going to make everything so much easier. Landscapes, it's going to make it so much easier to edit your photographs. But it is never going to be perfect. I don't believe it is ever going to be perfect because it's these transition effects in shots like long exposure. Where do you transition? When you when I took that photograph, I had a specific view in my mind. And being honest with you, if I were to manually do that now, I would mask out the section and I would brighten the section. And then I would probably put a secondary mask in here on the water's edge, just where the water is falling over. And then the sea body would be back up along here somewhere. So, you know, is... Is AI technology going to be able to do that? <laughs> I suppose part of me hopes it won't. Because if it does, then I suppose I don't have a job anymore. So it, it, it's kind of scary from that perspective. But I think the with, with the Super Select AI on one have got this really right. And it really is looking really good. Now, the only thing I will say, and the one caveat to all this is that the masking is not perfect as of yet. But again, I have to stress, this is the beta version. I'm not even going to edit this photograph because I don't see the point in it. But it, I've edited enough other photographs before and you can see how it's going to, it, it is going to work out reasonably well. Is it going to be perfect? No, it is not going to be perfect. Simply speaking, because the masking is wrong. So I, I would hope... And I genuinely would hope the final version is going to get it better than that. And the water's edge all along here is going to be right. And up along here is going to be right. But I think these transitional areas 
are always going to be a problem. So, again, on one, prove me wrong. Um, and I really do hope he do, to a certain extent. But I like my job too as well, so I hope he don't. <laughs> no offence on one, but um, let's see how it goes. I'm hoping to get my final copy um, on my workstation here in the next couple of weeks. And once I do, and once I test it out, I'm going to post a few more videos on Super Select AI, obviously. But um, I have another video coming up now in the next few days on Keyword AI. I have a video up on TechSharp AI and also my overall review of On One Photo Raw 2023 so far. Um, I haven't speed tested anything as of yet because it just isn't fair because this is not a final version. And um, I seriously appreciate you watching the video. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask them. I'm more than happy to help and answer them um, in any way I possibly can. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and um, see you out there, everyone.